Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this short game to the Come video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We'll be starting things out with the i7-9700K with news that it's going to 8-core 16 threads, while the i5-6 core 12 thread processor, known as the 9600K, possibly might be the best purchase for gamers. So we'll be tackling that news in just a moment. Then we'll move over to AMD, because we need to balance AMD and Intel news out, the best we can after all. And that will be the 2500U Ryzen APU. Specifically some benchmarks which have appeared early, so we'll discuss those. And then finally, Samsung and a new battery that they have been developing, which not only has a greater amount of charge than current batteries, but also charges up to five times faster. But first things first, Intel. And this is the ninth generation processor series. Now, this information comes to us from a website, hkepc.com. Now, obviously, this information, as you can expect, is unconfirmed by Intel. So if it happens to be incorrect, well, it is what it is. However, they have sources, according to a Taiwanese motherboard manufacturer. Apparently, this ninth generation uh series that we heard about just a few days ago is going to indeed be canon lake and will not be a refresh of coffee lake however news is still a little up in the air with that so don't really think of it as one or the other just know that it's going to be the ninth generation it's most likely as well that it'll be based on 14 nm plus plus but even that news is a bit up in the air with uh, some sources saying it's 10, others saying it's 14. But regardless, the main focus of this piece of news, of course, is the core count. So Intel, I think we all know, got caught somewhat with their pants down when AMD released Ryzen. And it smacked Intel upside the head, and well it should. But Intel may have got a lot of positive press with the performance of Coffee Lake. Not so much with the fact that it needs a new motherboard, of course, but still. However... There still was one thing that AMD had over Intel, and that is, of course, the core count. With the Ryzen 7s, you have up to 8 cores, 16 threads available for an application. So Intel, of course, don't want AMD to get away with that. So according to this website, we're going to be seeing a 9700K feature 8 cores, 16 threads, while the i5 gets the upgrade of hyper-threading. So that is very interesting. It's the first desktop CPU, at least as far as I know, uh, in terms of i5 that's actually had hyper-threading. Anyway, that means we have 6 cores, 12 threads. Essentially, I imagine that that means that we're going to see the 9600K roughly on par with the 8700K, assuming there's no clock speed or cache differences or any other little shenanigans. Also of note is that a lot of i3s are also going to get some tweaks. So essentially what AMD will be facing up against here with Ryzen is a brand new Intel lineup. There will however still be certain Coffee Lake processors which will be introduced. And as I mentioned possibly the most interesting of which is the i5-8650K. Now we don't know many details about that but speculation does tell us that it's most likely going to be a refined version of the 8600k so most probably we're going to be looking at the same situation as let's say the 4770k up to the 4790k in other words a slight tweak of the silicon possibly and most likely a better or slash more stable clocks really what it comes down to now of course is what pinnacle ridge can bring up against the 9700k and its ilk ultimately pinnacle ridge Details are a little sketchy from what we're hearing from roadmaps. It's still going to have 8 cores, 16 threads, but there will be some improvements on the pure clock speed of the processor, plus some IPC tweaks. But of course, as usual, AMD could throw a spanner in the works and decide, hey, you know what, we're just going to add another 2 cores. We could do. After all, if we see a, dying, a die shrink, excuse me, it is possible but it would be contrary to the roadmaps which have been leaked. But, of course, roadmaps can be out of date. Just don't go expecting it, essentially. Next up, we'll discuss something definitely AMD-related, the Ryzen 5 2500U. 
and this is according to a website by the name of notebookcheck.net and their title is known as the first Ryzen 5 2500G benchmark set in and Intel has every reason to worry end quote what we have here of course is a plethora of different benchmarks which pit the i5 Oh, sorry, the Ryzen 5 2500U against multiple Intel CPUs and other such shenanigans. Honestly, the performance is pretty impressive. With Cinebench R15 scoring 574 on multi-thread, 3DMark 11 scoring 2,918 points with the APU, with the GPU scoring 3,602. This is, by the way, at 720p. And, of course... Some would say, well, that's nowhere near as impressive as, let's say, a GTX 1050, which scores way over double the performance. It scores 7,731 with the Gigabyte Sabre 15G. And that is, of course, with a GTX 1050 plus the 77HQ processor. However, do bear in mind that that is not an APU. That is a discrete graphics chip paired with a discrete processor, and therefore there's difference. Whereas this Ryzen uh whereas this Ryzen 2500U plus Vega 8 are of course an APU, which means it's all part of the same beautiful package. Does this mean that this processor is going to be perfect for gamers? No, probably not. Unless of course they did decide to ramp up performance, possibly make a few tweaks here and there, and the most obvious one is increase the number of compute units. But for people looking for light gaming or possibly some basic computer orientated work, like let's say basic video editing, that type of stuff, basic 3D rendering tasks, or possibly even uh, a light system which is good for, let's say, uh, photo retouching, let's say uh, Photoshop, that would be a good example, or Illustrator, then a processor like this would be absolutely perfect for something for you just to take with your client if it's light and you can take it on the subway or whatever you need to do. I'd like, to, I'd like, excuse me, to thank a viewer by the name of Joe for sending me this particular piece of news, and this comes to us from ZDNet or ZDNet, however you wish to say it. And the inventor of this is the Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology. So this is about batteries. Let's face it, batteries are great in that you've got portable power, and of course they're used from everything now, from cell phones down to even the Nintendo Switch, but it has one problem, and that is it needs to be recharged at some point or another. And Samsung are utilising graphene. Uh, according to Samsung's electronic research arm, they have successfully synthesised a graphene ball which can be used to make lithium-ion batteries last longer and charge faster. So how much better can this be? Well, according to Samsung, and obviously we'll have to wait for independent testing for verification on these claims, but it could mean that a smartphone battery can be fully charged in just 12 minutes. That's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, if you're going to pee, your battery could be like 10 or 15% charged if I'm going to the toilet. Anyway, the capacity will also grow by 45%. That's very good, because as we all know, not only do devices eat up more power now, as we expect them to do more and more and more tasks, but regardless, it's very frustrating to have your battery go on the warning light at around the 30% mark when you've only just started to sit down for your afternoon coughing. So, you know, more battery equals good. Finally, the battery itself should be stable up to about 60 degrees Celsius. So another potential possibility, obviously in a very different configuration, not the same one for your cell phone, much larger, of course, but it could also be utilised in electric cars, which would obviously be a fantastic usage of additional battery life, because let's face it, more battery life equals you can go faster, or even better, especially if you're driving around in the city, you can drive for longer. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.